Hi everyone, Rachel here. Welcome to episode number 40 of the Ditch the Diet podcast. On Tuesday night, I was... I had the pleasure of Dave Cottrell's company in the Ditch the Diet Academy and we spoke about lots of things uh, but in particular we discussed the role of changing the way you think when it comes to losing weight and breaking through barriers like emotional eating, binge eating and disordered eating. So I thought, "Mm, let's upload uh, the audio from the video that we did the other night into the podcast because it was an invaluable conversation and I think that you will find it extremely useful. So I'm just going to upload the audio from the video. Hopefully it's good enough. I'm sure you'll be able to to listen. And then I'll be back at the end to tell you a little bit more about where you can find Dave if you want to take part in his A Life A Day. All right, enjoy. All right, we're live. Thank you very much for joining me after your long day. (laughs) <laughs> you are very welcome. No place I would rather be at this particular moment in time. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm 99% sure. Yeah. Now I've actually no to be fair, I've been looking forward to this all day, so yeah. I'm actually sure. I'm sure. Me too. Me too. Um so for the for those viewers who don't know who you are, let's uh, let's do some introductions first of all. So Dave, take it away. Oh God! Do you remember what happened when you had me do this on your podcast? Um, we ran out of we ran out of broadcast time. Um, okay, I'll give you the super duper quick version. I am Dave Cottrell. I am a mindset coach primarily. Um, it used to be a PT primarily, but I've managed to make the transition into primarily doing with mindset um, slash PT slash nutrition, and I deal with all aspects of mindset. Uh, which is ridiculously difficult to brand and would be so much more easy to brand just as a nutritionist. Um, I bring what I like to think of as an unparalleled level of empathy and understanding to what I do simply because I've overcome um, obesity and eating disorder myself as well as I have a continued um, daily, I'm not going to call it a struggle, journey, shall we say, with type 2 bipolar disorder. So um, as well as the knowledge I have, I tend to bring more in empathy than your average person to what I do. And that's the shortest intro I've ever given myself. So I'm going to stop there. <laughs> and now I'm going to ask you to elaborate. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> tell, us, I know. Yeah, tell me a little bit about where, tell me a little bit about your journey. So how did you get into doing what it is that you're doing today? Okay. Um, when I was 24 at New Year's Eve, I was 23 stone and I was, well, 23 stone six to be completely specific. And I'd love to say that there was some big drastic realization about my weight or whatever. But to be perfectly honest, I think I just kind of hid inside humor and never really bothered to think about my weight ever. Um, I'd been diagnosed with um, what was called manic depression when I was 14, but is now commonly referred to as bipolar disorder, of which I have specifically type 2, which is what I like to think of as the easier of the two to deal with, and I'm very grateful that I've not got the other one. Um, So the the physical health transformation came first, and it was really just to kind of piss off a friend who had made a bet with me that who could lose the most weight within a year. I figured I had a lot more to lose than he did, which ultimately meant that I was going to win. I did win. Um, And I kind of lost, started losing weight at about a speed of about a stone a month for about six months. Um, Went down quite like to about 18 stone, to about 17 stone that time around. And then kind of just cruised there for a little while until later down the line, I got into Muay Thai and then I got down to 14 stone to compete um, in the ring because there's not the, the, I was in the super heavyweight category because like you'll get over 95 kilos and um, you're pretty much in the super heavyweight category, which means you could be against a 175 kilo monster if they existed in Thai boxing. And um, it was like sort of later on in that that I realised that my mental health had improved. I didn't kind of twig the put the two and two together. I just realised that I was actually having the, the bad days I was having were further, fewer and further between. And that was what kind of then there was a period where I 
then decided I wanted to get, I needed to change my career. I was a sound engineer. I was failing in business at the time. And there was a lot of people recording songs on their iPhones instead of coming to me, which I thought was the reason for it at the time. Turns out I just didn't know how to market myself, but there, um, and I decided I wanted to change career into something I loved in order to get into the shape that I got into. I had to learn a hell of a lot about fitness, about nutrition. Um, I did all of the bad ways to get loose weight and to get fit in the first place. And then I learned the good ways as I went. And I wanted to help other people avoid those pitfalls, like the same going through all of that, you know, the crap to get to the good. Um, and then once I became a coach, I actually found that my mental health became the best it had ever been because I put it down a lot of the time to, um, to the idea that, I'm, I'm such an, I'm, I'm what's called an obliger. I mean, we've talked about this thing in the past is that I am much more like to look after other people's expectations than my own. And um, if someone else has got an, um, some, a requirement of me, I'm much more readily available to give that. Now I found being helped that by being in that helpful position, it actually made me feel the best I ever did. And I had other people that I had to get out of bed for and, be the best version of me and even if some days i had to fake that at first it's the whole the fake it till you make it thing really did work for me um most of the time it doesn't work ever. nothing works all the time i don't think and that led me to well the mindset thing came slightly after that but um how i transitioned into that coaching do you want me to carry on with that or do you want to ask me that as a separate question it'll probably come out either way yeah no it will come out but um, <laughs> <laughs> You, you tackle not only weight loss, but um, all aspects of fitness, mental fitness, physical fitness, spiritual fitness, I suppose. Um, and you, you kind of tackle it from the, probably the more important side. So I, do, I, can, I can teach all the nutritional side, fitness side, the exercise side, but you, you really tackle the deep down root causes of what is actually causing people to struggle with losing weight in yep. the beginning would you say that is that correct like I, I got that right <laughs> yeah yeah um as i said like at the beginning i think if i if i marketed myself as a as a nutrition and mindset coach for people with eating disorders i probably have a full kind of roster of clients now i refuse to kind of just do um weight loss and just do that type of thing but because of my background with personal training that tends to be a lot of the work that I get coming in. And particularly when I do collaborative work with people like yourself or the work I do with Ben Coomba, um, it's always on the kind of more the emotional eating side of things or the mindset behind it kind of side of things. And to be fair, it's, um, it's it all, so much of it just comes down to behavioral change, which is regardless of whether it, it, the, the techniques and stuff that I would use for an eating disorder um, are the same that I would use for alcoholism and I see the same similar, the same that I'd use for drug addiction, the same as that I'd use for not being able to kind of put the time in that there was someone wants training or even being too hard on themselves. And it's looking, at, I look at kind of behaviours, um, the main, the, one of the biggest drivers is I look at the positive impact of a behaviour that is happening. And um, like we assume that even a negative behaviour has a positive intention. And that's one of the root kind of, I suppose, the root things in which I'm looking at in I, a lot of what I deal with, whether it is weight loss or not. So the, the great thing about this is, is when I get a weight loss client in or an eating disorder client in, we, get, we talk about these techniques, but then we can look at how those techniques are useful in other areas of their life as well. So it becomes this kind of holistic change, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I think when you mentioned the word eating disorder, um, a lot of people that come out of the diet culture, the diet circle, and um, people that are joy that have joined that's the diet. Um possibly, you know, probably don't have eating disorders but do have disordered eating patterns. Yes. Don't know this yourself. Um the, the fi fixation on food, um the sort of on plan, off plan mentality, the good, bad mentality and focusing on a lot of people and I've noticed this a lot since we opened on Monday that a lot, a lot of members are in a like urgent rush for me to tell them, give them a list of foods to eat. Um, mm -hmm. I'm for me to, I find it quite hard to explain the reason why we don't actually talk about foods for like the first two weeks, um, yeah. properly. Um, that I like to 
encourage behaviour change. And although I'm not actually telling members, hi members, I'm not actually <laughs> telling you that this is what I'm doing with you. Um, the tasks and things that you are carrying out are to help you change or start to learn how to change behaviours that you've probably been exhibiting for a number of years, if not decades. So um, Dave is much more equipped to explain to you why addressing what's going on up here and the behaviours that you're exhibiting is going to be beneficial to you if you struggle with things like emotional eating. Um, yeah. But believe that you don't have willpower, motivation, um, and can't sort of can't sort of find the discipline to carry out the necessary tasks to get you to where you want to be. Yeah, I mean, I think I know what I, one of the things that I spoke about on the discussion that we had on um, your page the other day was this idea of whether discipline um, was it willpower or discipline were the two things that I kind of said that I don't think it's a case of lacking willpower or discipline. I mean, all these things are kind of are just labels that we put on things, and well, like they they all sort of mean the same thing. And I said I feel that in, from the work that I do, it's a lot of the time it's someone's um, self-esteem that is that that can be the problem or lack of self-esteem and there's an interesting thing with self-esteem is that no matter how many times i tell you you are good enough or anybody else tells you you are good enough that's just esteem that's not self-esteem unless you believe, are ready to and willing to believe it yourself unless you are ready to actually talk to yourself in that way then it's my my advice or your advice isn't going to have the same impact that it could have for a person to kind of sit down and say, actually, you know what, I'm good enough and I deserve better than this. It's hard because we've got so many years of practice, either someone else telling us we're not, or worse, ourselves telling us that we're not. Um, and as a result, if you don't believe that you're good enough, you don't believe you've got the efficacy to actually carry out a plan, when it goes to part, like, well, well, all on the day that it goes to part, you, what, you pay more attention to that one day where it goes wrong, and you allow that, which is something called negativity bias, to prove that you can't handle this. Like you could have someone, and especially I know you've got, you've only just opened the door. So if you so if you're someone who's watching this, that is like you know we're watching this say three four weeks down the line, and you've had three four weeks of being awesome and being on point, and then you have one day where you go off point. It's so tempting if the self esteem is there, not there. Sorry to to look at that and go right. Well, I'm a failure because of this. You've not told yourself for the other 27 days of those four weeks that I'm a success because of that. And, the, you know, that is 27, 28 is more true. That's a, that's a fraction that you never use, isn't it? Um, <laughs> if, you, if you are winning, if you are succeeding 27 out of 28 times and you can failing, and I use the word failing in bloody air quotes because you're not really failing, it's... Um, we're much more readily to accept that that isn't there, like that, that in that one period that we failed. And again, this can come into our identity. If you believe yourself as someone who has always failed on diets, you will believe to yourself that you haven't. I'm, I, I'm not actually, I rec I'm going to put almost put money on the fact that that's one of the reasons that you've got this is this the diet because this isn't a diet. If someone's already failed on diets, then they don't have to, they're not going to fail on this because this isn't a diet. This is an education program, right? Yeah, there's no end date. Like there's no expiry date. It's um, it's a case of you know this is this is it now. Like this is the habits that I'm, everyone has different goals. Everyone has different habits that they want to change. And it's yeah. not, you know we're we're trying to move away from the. Um, I'll just take myself as an example when I used to on and off diets like every other day it was like I almost started on a Monday who doesn't we all yeah and um, by Wednesday afternoon Thursday I was actually planning ahead for those days I was like on Thursday I'm gonna go to we had this little Italian deli like five minutes walk from the house I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna buy one of their it's like a biscuit type thing I was like planned it in advance <laughs> and then after I had eaten it and it, you know it was like that size small biscuit after I had eaten it I felt this almost like grief it was like I cannot believe I can't believe that I have done this again and I would focus on the one negative like you said but that's not normal behavior mm -hmm. so how do we get how do we start to believe that we're good enough 
Okay. Um, oof, uh, I, thought that I thought that question. I thought I thought that question was going in a slightly different way. I thought you were going to say, "How do we deal with that kind of grief and guilt?" That, in fact, I'm going to make it. I'll come back to that. I'll come back. So, how do we start believing that we're good enough? Okay. Number one rule of mindset or life, depending on how you want to look at it, is we get better at the things we do. Often, we have spent so much time in our lives telling ourselves or being told that we're not good enough that we believe it to be true. The first time that we say it, or the first time someone else tells it to us, it's kind of like you're putting a drop of, you know, a drop of kind of like the, one grain of, of sugar in a piece in a in a big pool of water. It's like it's not going to make that turn the whole thing sweet. We have to continue to kind of add into it and, and continue to be good at believe at that, that. And the way the way I would say to do it is to actually look at the efforts that you're doing and, and try and look at them objectively. So when we when we've talked about just now of the fact that okay, again to the end of the day, and let's say let's say we had, you know, let we let's say we, like we've done ten hours worth of work in the day and we've made one cock up in the whole of that ten hours. It's so easy to fixate on that at the end of the day and say, and, and almost say that that negates everything else. But it's just not true. And where we place that focus, it makes the belief, it make, you know, and the belief then drives the behavior. So you believe yourself to be a failure. You act like a failure. If you believe yourself to be a failure in a diet, how does a failure in a diet act? Well, they eat the, the, the tiny biscuit and call themselves a failure. They eat 10 of the tiny biscuits or they, they skip their training or they sit on the couch and have three pizzas. Or for me, it was an entire packet of biscuits that I would eat a cup of tea with in the fact that I'd just dumped them in the tea till there was no tea left. Um, but it's like, if we actually think of this in terms of, in terms of when a child is learning to kind of walk or talk, if a child's learning to talk and let, like, you know, I imagine the first time I said mum or any variation of that, it probably came out as some garbled thing that had a kind of M sound in it that my mum, am I allowed to swear on this? Yeah, of course. That my, that my mum just lost her shit over. <laughs> you know, she'll have like, I'll have gone something like, ma, ma, and then she'll have gone, oh my God, she's like, you know, like, she's like, she'll have made a huge, massive deal out of it. And then she'll have really encouraged me to try to make that sound a little stronger. And that eventually became the, you know, the word mum. It became, or the, the word mummy or mama or whatever it became. The same as when I took that first sort of tentative step away from the couch. She didn't come over and sweep my feet out from underneath me and say, don't bother doing that until you can get across the whole floor. This is what we need to do with ourselves is we need to look at the steps that we're taking positively and give ourselves more recognition and praise for them than the things that we're not doing that we're not doing well now where people push back against this is they think oh well if i do that i'm never going to improve it's like well you're not improving now mm -hmm. the, the way you've tried it so far by being too hard on yourself is not improving at the same time if we go the whole path of saying being too soft on ourselves and like be full-on accepting of everything that feels nice and it's possibly where some people need to go for a little period just to recover but we don't improve there either so it's not complete and utter tough love it's not complete and utter acceptance it's i'm as good as i can be at this exact moment right now because i can't change anything that's come before this date but that doesn't mean i won't get better yeah. I'm finding that finding that balance is like you know is, is saying yes okay I am good enough now it doesn't mean you're not going to get better saying that I accept the weight I am right now doesn't mean you can't lose or gain weight mm -hmm. saying that I am I I respect my relationship with food right now does not mean that you cannot change it it just means that rather than giving yourself grief and guilt about it, like you gave yourself the grief about the biscuit, grief's a word that not many people use about biscuits. So like, you know, high fives to you for that one. <laughs> Normally it's guilt, but you went for grief. Well, I, love <laughs> I love it. I was, uh, it was, took me quite a while to figure out that that's, I think that was the, the emotion that I had. It was almost like, um, like a grief. Mm. Um, it was very, like, really horrible. When I think back to it, and I think where I am now, it's easy enough for me to stand here and say this now, that when I look back, I think, what was I thinking? But at, at the time, it was very, very real, and I feel fortunate to be in a position now where I can, I can genuinely, I would say six days out of seven, um, think exactly like how you are thinking, just 
like how you explained there and that I am the best version of me that I can be right now. It doesn't, yeah. doesn't mean to say that I don't want to be better at certain things. And yeah. when I'm ready to decide what I want to be better at, I'll put the work in and do it. Uh, yeah. It took me a long time to get to this point. A long, long time. And mm. that takes me to uh, a quick question. On your board behind you, you have the word patience written. Uh, is it written? Is it, can you see that? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm wondering how much of that you can read. <laughs> can you read the bit that says, I will not stop until I've changed the life of thousands? That's the. Oh, I can see that bit now. But oh, yeah. oh it patience. Yeah, that's that's there because I'm a massively impatient person. Yeah. Um, the because, as far as I'm concerned, I'm a total and utter legend, right? No, <laughs> I'm not. I, I um, it's it's so late. It's so late in the day that I've got a god complex. This happens around about this time of day. Um, it's the joys of being bipolar. It's it's uh, this is when I'm Tigger, and when I'm Tigger, I'm, I'm unstoppable. When I'm Eeyore, I'm unstartable. Um, so, but yeah, no, um, it's patience is written there because I find it very easy to get frustrated that the work, like, like you know, like, and I'm sure you'll have experienced this, but the work that I've put out there and the messages that I put out there aren't necessarily getting picked up. And I know that, I know that they can help a lot of people. I mean, I've helped a, a, way more people this year than I've ever helped any year before. And I know that, you know, things like what we've talked about there and like it helps can help big groups of people in a short space of time. Um, and so for me, the, the word patience is written up there because quite frankly, I've only been doing the mindset side of this thing for two years. So I look at it and I go, oh, it should be further along, it should be further along. And I'll get, I'll get to the word short in a minute, which is a, a word to kind of remove from everyone's vocabulary if possible. But I'll be like, I should be like further along. And then I'm actually, you know what, for someone who's been doing this for two years, you're pretty far along. Like there's, there's a lot of people, you know, obviously like you, I'm, I get to come and be a guest and you, I was, you were my first ever interviewer. They were the first person that ever interviewed me. I got to be a guest on your podcast. That was I got, exactly a year ago to the day. Today? Um, I, I don't know if it was today or yesterday, but it was very recent. Okay. Um, yeah. Cause you were, you were, yeah, you were, you released your podcast a little bit ahead of mine, didn't you? Yeah. My, mine's a year old tomorrow. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Happy birthday to our podcast. Don't listen to the podcast. We will, uh, I'll make sure that you've got the link to Dave's podcast as well. So. Yeah, it's, uh, I give a very long introduction. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> the patience things up there to remind me of the fact that, that certain things, especially like certain things I've done still gain traction now, certain things, like I'll hear back from people that I said things to nine months ago. And it's, it, it's just to remind me that in in doing the work, the type of work I do, and this can be the case in a, in a diet for sure, in any fitness journey, is the work that you do, you don't get an immediate response from it. And sometimes that response is delayed in the business world, in the coaching world, that response can be delayed by a long time. You know, so you could say something to someone that like would they would then two years later want you to appear on a guest talk or whatever it may be. Um, and that type of thing happens and you don't especially in the early days of, of running a business you do not see that so that's written up there for me to remind me of that to stop basically um being so whingy when things don't go my way because i i have a certain degree of detachment like i put things out there with the hope that certain things will go in a certain way and then i try to detach myself from that and try being the operative word there because i don't always and if i if I say, for example, put a piece of content out that I like, I get these ones that I'm just super excited about and I can't wait for people to hear them and they go out and they get absolutely no response. And I have to kind of, like with that, I have to be detached from the fact that that didn't get response. Yes, again, learn from it and maybe think, why didn't it? Or even then look at it from a different point of view and say, actually, what what is response? You know, like if I put a particularly challenging piece up about mental health, not many people will interact with it because it's almost like people think that by interacting with that, they're talking, they're admitting their own mental health or it's a, something that they don't worry, they're not quite ready to deal with yet. And you may, and these are the ones when I say, I hear back from people nine months down the line and they'll be like, oh, so this particular piece of content like really moved me. I'm like, right, thanks. Why the hell didn't you hit the share button on it? Or why didn't you comment on it then? Because it like at the time I thought that was a, I thought that was kind of like a terrible piece of content based on how it was received, despite the fact that I was excited about it. Yeah, I think that's something that you can 
that relate to a weight loss journey or a fitness journey or health journey is that um, all of the all of the things that you do on a daily basis sometimes, like in fact, I would say the vast majority of the time you do not see the actual benefit of all of the things that you're doing on a day to day basis. Like, yeah, a way that you know when you stop dieting, start learning about nutrition, learning about food, you don't lose nine pounds in your first week. You know, mm-hmm. you may not even lose one pound in your first week, but if you were to look back three years down the line, all of those small habits that you learned, that you implemented and became um, an unconscious habit, have all added up to this person that is this future person mm-hmm. that you can't actually see at the moment. So um, with me, with the academy only being open for eight days, uh, I'm seeing a lot of impatience. Yeah. And this is the diet. This is the diet mentality. Um, and it's so hard to get out of, Rachel. When will I get my food plan? Rachel, um, I, you haven't told me what to eat yet. Rachel, I can't get this video to play. And it's, I'm trying to sort of like, calm down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is required. Um, do you have any, I suppose, like practical tips that people could maybe take that are feeling the urge to see these quick results um, what, do you have any words of wisdom that allow people to understand how important it is to just slow down um, yeah, maybe I've got one that's about, about kind of behaviours that we don't get necessarily the immediate response of mm-hmm. um, and it's another one of the kind of the pillars of what I would teach is the fact that a lot of times we have what behaviours that I call as boomerangs which is a boomerang gives you a short term kind of positive only to give you a long-term negative a lot of these like so uh, i'm not going to say a low-carb diet is an is a boomerang but what i'm going to use it as an example as a short term thing you say people what a lot of people pick up on the low carb thing is because you take 100 grams of carbs out of your diet overnight and then you lose half a kilo the next day because of water weight and things like that so people associate that with what it's got, what they're going to get, but then it's, if ultimately that leads them to long term not being able to maintain that diet, getting cravings, binging on things, and therefore their calorie deficit over time doesn't end up being the same as what it would have done with a more moderate approach, then they're going to end up with this sort of this period of the, the, the trajectory that they're going to be on is not going to be the same. The results they're going to get is not going to be the same long term, despite this almost short term deception, and. Um, and I say short term deception, one of the biggest prime examples of, uh, and with, with like sort of disordered eating, eating disorder, or emotional eating, however you want to kind of label that, is this idea of kind of stress. Like, so someone will eat for the purpose of stress. Their stresses have built up throughout the course of the day. And then they get to the point where they've hit the point where it's symptomatic now, which is, I want this food because it will give me this release. It gives you, and everyone will be able to relate to this that's done this because it gives you that release for, if you're lucky, a few minutes. If, but really, it gives you that release for about 15 seconds. The dopamine and serotonin goes crazy in your brain for a little period of time once that food hits your lips. But then, like, you know, as you said before about grief or most people, remorse or guilt goes on top. The stresses that were there before don't disappear, but you get the illusion of stress relief in the short term, only for them to be having more in the medium to long term. You wake up the next morning, hopefully you've hit the reset switch by then, but more often than not, you wake up in the next morning feeling less motivated to go forward. And therefore, you hit that stress point at three o'clock in the afternoon rather than at six o'clock in the evening. Um, and the the opposite to that, that's called I call it a boomerang because like you throw a boomerang forward and it comes whipping back. And because I know you love all things Australian, I do actually own one. Oh, you actually um, own one. <laughs> I got it when I, I got it when I was over in Australia earlier this year. Oh, um, and um, but I, the opposite the opposite to a boomerang is what I call a slingshot. So a slingshot is you put effort in, you pull it back, you put it under tension only to let it fly forward. And like what you're essentially what you're asking your people to do by asking them to slow down is is a slingshot. It's putting effort in that's going to feel slightly unnatural, slightly uncomfortable to them in the short term. But in the long term, it's going to give them so much more ability to be in control, to 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 actually be less stressed, to you know not need to actually turn to food for that comfort, or to actually get to the body composition goals that they want and they've been looking for 
they've been looking for in all of these short-term solutions. Here's the thing. It's like you're in this group now because you've, you've maybe you've tried one or two or 10 or 20 or 5,000 of these short-term solutions. Um, if you're asking yourself, what's the quickest way to X, you're, you're possibly asking the, the wrong question. The quickest way to where you want to get to is to change your mindset away from looking for a quick, a quick answer because the best things in life are not quick. The best thing, you know, the best things, everything, practically everything, I don't like to use everything, most things um, in life, if it's given you, if it's given you that immediate gratification, it's at a long-term cost. It's like a loan. It's like, you know, it's, it's giving you that immediate cash injection only to be wanted to be paid back later with interest. Um, that's what a fad diet will do for you. That's what, yeah, Rachel has, you, you know, I'm obviously speaking about you in third person to your audience, that's weird. Um, you have, I'm like, you know, to your audience, Rachel has the knowledge. She has, she has the knowledge to get, to get eight pounds off you this week. You're not going to like it. It's not going to feel good. Um, and it won't get eight pounds off you next week. And, you know, do you want the one that gets, you know, 12, 20, you know, 30 pounds off you in the long term versus the one that gets eight off you, maybe another three or four in the long term through a load of weeks of frustration? Um, it's about putting in that effort. And the problem is, like, we're, we're wired to want that easy route because it's like the two paths in your brain and the left hand path lead is like a well laid out path with music playing, the birds are singing, the sun's shining, there's an ice cream stand along there, it's brilliant, and it gives you that immediate gratification. But it's leading you to like a snake at the end of the path. It's leading you to a horrible destination. It's leading you, and it's a sneaky destination that a lot of you might be in now. Um, but you didn't get there overnight. You got there in, like by going down that path over time, and you sneakily suddenly you wake up one day and you're like shit. <laughs> and but whereas the the opposite path, it looks like a scary forest. The one I, mean, I don't know if anyone's seen the film Big Fish. If you've never seen it, Rachel, you need to. It's brilliant. Um, there's a forest in Big Fish. In fact, there's actually a two path scene in Big Fish, and um, the protagonist wants to take the harder one. The, the I always envisioned this as in my head as being the one from that movie. It's like this scary forest where there's like wolves and there's those creepy little glowy eyes, and the weather's terrible, and there's nettles, and you're wearing shorts. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And like, yeah. at the end of that path is, is, you know, is everything you ever wanted is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow kind of is, is, is you know, what you've actually been chasing all of this time. Problem yeah. is you have to make the choice to go down a difficult path. Mm. And, and that that pot of gold is at the end it's, it's a sort of trust. Because... You can't see it from where you are, just like you can't see the snake at the end of the nice path. Yeah. And it's a new context. You know, stepping into the unknown and it's hard and it's scary. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and you know what? It also comes back to this self-esteem thing because you take a step down that path and it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel comfortable. It doesn't feel easy. And you look at that and you go, well, you know, not you because you wouldn't tell everyone it's just it's, it's as easy as just getting a calorie deficit but a lot of people on the internet do they yeah. look at the, the and the load of people are like yeah well i lost weight it's dead easy you can too and you look at that and then they go well it's, it should just be easy should and i said i'd come back to the word should <laughs> um it should it should just be easy but it's not and when it's when it should be easy and it's not you go well what's wrong with me Mm. Oh, actually, you first you go, why can't I do this? Which yeah. assumes that you can't. And then you follow a question is, what's wrong with me? And this is the self-esteem thing again, is we go to what's wrong with us, not what's difficult about this path, not how can I get beat back some of those weeds? How can I improve the, you know, how, or it's about looking at that path, accepting that it's going to be difficult and going down it anyway. Mm. And, you know, when it is difficult, it's not because there's anything wrong with you. It's not because you are a failure or that you're finding it too difficult. It's that the bloody path is bloody difficult. <laughs> it's not your, like, it's not just you. It's yeah. When dieting is hard, that is not your fault as an individual. That it's, it's because dieting is bloody hard. Being hungry is hard. Like, turning away, like, turning away if you've got if you've got like quite an active social life like yes you will have to turn down some of them we like to i know that you you know we like to have some of them still in there we don't want to have anyone to ever be like a complete and utter martyr for the cause um but you might have to do that and that is hard and that's 
that's okay that that's hard and that you find that difficult because it's not that there's any fault with you it's that the actual choice itself is hard the path itself is hard but if you want to get to where you want to get to you've got to take that path anyway yeah you know that's that's hit the nail on the head i am i work i have worked on this a lot and you know even more recently it just made me realize something that i've been doing a lot of and that is um thinking that a little bit sometimes thinking that there's something wrong with me in fact one of my friends said to me the other day i was i said to him what a bad mental health day and she said rachel what you're doing is hard like you're all like to be best yep and i thought Oh, and as soon as I actually thought to myself, oh, I can actually allow myself to feel stressed because anybody would be stressed if they were in this position or, you know. And when you think like that, it makes things seem a little bit more uh, surmountable. Yeah. I think surmountable must be a word if insurmountable is a word. Yeah, that's what I'm I've always wondered if whelmed is a word, because overwhelmed is a word, underwhelmed is a word, but what's whelmed? You know, it's the right, the, the correct, just the right, just the right amount of whelm. Just the right amount of whelm. <laughs> I'm, I'm still, very whelmed today. Well, yeah, it's better than being overwhelmed, I guess. Uh, well, whelmed is a sport, is, is like, you know, it's a, it's a level of whelm that you can manage. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've always, I've, I've always wondered that one because it just doesn't feel like it's a real word when I say it. So, but no, nah, ha- neither does half the crap that comes out of my mouth, to be perfectly honest. Right. So before we wrap up, two things. Um, first thing, I'm going to put you on the spot. Three things that my members can do to help boost their self-esteem over the next six months. Okay, cool. Um, number one is a terribly shameless plug, which is go to my Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash mindset by Dave and watch the pinned video, which is called You Are Enough. Funnily enough, that's what we're trying to teach you is that you are enough. I know I said at the beginning of this call that you need to accept it for yourself, yet hearing it from me might help get you on the on the route to that. Um, second I'm thing... Sure of hankies at the ready for that yeah um four minutes and 20 seconds hankies at the ready maybe i've have i ever cried at it i think i cried right in it um <laughs> and maybe i cried when the videographer sent me it back with the visuals that happens a lot um and but and please and listen to it with my wonderful northern tones or not as northern as rachel's um <laughs> because I want you to hear it with the inflection, not just what, because the subtitles have got the words at the bottom, but I would like for you to hear it because I've said it how I want it to be heard. Um, so that's a shameless plug, but trust me, it's it's four minutes of your time. It's completely free. It's not, and it, it will help. Um, number two is about you are enough in terms of that phrase. Ask yourself what it takes for someone else to be enough in your eyes. So what does it take for your mum to be enough for you? If you've got children particularly, what does it take for your kids to be good enough in your eyes? I, spoiler alert, the answer is nothing. Um, so if, it doesn't, if someone else doesn't need to do anything in order to be good enough in your eyes, why do you place this high expectation on yourself? Um, and then the third thing is to actually sit back and say, is this level of self-criticism helping me get to where I want to be? Because ultimately, the, you know, somewhere there's no, like, you know, as I said earlier, there's these two sorts of camps. There's the tough love on one side, there's, this, there's the full acceptance on the other side. Where you are and where you will get the most motivation from and where you will feel the best is somewhere on that scale. It's not a binary thing. It's not an on or off. It's some people might want a bit more acceptance. Other people might need the tough love. Find out which find out which one of those motivates you to take the next step the most because ultimately that's going to help you along. And also that can change from day to day or week to week or month to month. If You, you might want more acceptance now, more tough love six months from now. You might need it the other way around. Um, and just be bloody compassionate to yourself because it's needed. Um, you wouldn't say the crap that you say to yourself to a best friend. Um, last but not least, I would like you to tell everyone about your life a day. 
Okie dokie. Um, my life a day is, um, it's essentially something I've been doing all year and I will be doing it next year as well and the year after. So far, I've planned for three years of this. Um, it is my intention to positively impact the lives of 365 people for free throughout the course of 2018. I have done, uh, it's, I need to update the document, but I've done six of them today. So um, I'm catching up since my last trip, you see. I've done around 280 of them. So I'm into, I'm going into the last sort of 80, 85 now. So there's uh, there's not that many left, even though there's 85 of them left. Um, basically the way it works is you get an hour of my time, either face to face, if you happen to be around the sort of Liverpool, Southport, Manchester, around this sort of area. If you happen to be further away, you get an hour of my time on the phone. And by further away, I mean, I've dealt with people in Bahrain, Australia, America, Canada, India, Pakistan. So I will, um, I will, you know, just, we'll, I'll figure out the time difference and we'll sort in a, we'll sort out a slot. Three rules about it. One is it's completely and utterly free. So there will not be, it's not my way to get your email address. Don't even ask for it. It's not my way to get you in a sales funnel. I won't even talk about other products or anything like that while you're on there. I physically couldn't manage all 365 of you. So therefore I have no expectation to. Um, and yeah, I will. So, and I've got 200 and odd people that would vouch for the fact that I've not done that. I've not sold to anybody because that winds me up when people give away things away for free just to get, um, to sell something else. Number two is it's completely honestly confidential. I won't tell Rachel we've spoken unless you tell me to. I won't blab about you all over social media. I, this is the most annoying rule of my of it because I've got 270 success stories I could be telling to the world, but I'm not because your confidentiality is more important. Um, so that's number two. And number three is, and I can say this with quite high confidence these days because I'm so far through it, is I will help you. Um, I will go with a cat. I'll even add a fourth, a fourth rule in because one of the things that stops people from taking one of these is the fact that they think their problem is too small or they think their problem is too big. There's no such thing as too small or too big. If you think that you're thinking, should I reach out for help, but my problem's too small, chances are your problem is big enough for me to need to help with. If you think, is it too big, then it's definitely big enough for me to help with. I've dealt with things from eating disorders and just even self acceptance right the way up to four potential for attempted male suicides over the course of the year. Um, so that's kind of, you know, that gives you an idea of the fact that there is no, and there is nothing too big or too small. Um, particularly if the, you know, men have a tendency not to reach out until they get to that whole, absolutely have to do something about it um, phase. So if you feel that your problem is insignificant, I still want to talk about it. Um, it can be any area of mindset, anything that you feel stuck with. I remember speaking to you, I think I was in Sydney when you did mine, it must have been at the beginning. I lost you a bit there, what did you say, sorry? I, I was in Sydney when you did my call. You see, I wasn't allowed to talk about the fact that I did your one, you see, because of rule number two. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you were in Sydney when I did your call. Um, yeah. It was, yeah. Was in so, yeah, in fact, actually, yeah, you were possibly the furthest away. Oh. Unless I'm trying to think, wait a minute, wait, yeah, Sydney's further away than Melbourne, right? Uh, not really. Oh, okay. Actually. Okay. Well, you might be joint with someone else then. <laughs> um, I need to get someone from New Zealand on. <laughs> but, yeah. Sorry, does anyone, if there's any Kiwis I want to speak to, but. There is one actually. Um, <laughs> in Australia, there's quite a few people that are members of the Ditch Bat Academy in Australia, obviously. Oh. Because because you're massive in Australia. My audience is there. Um, <laughs> but, um, also, just before we go, Dave and I are going to be speaking live at an event in London, in central London, on the on Sunday, the 30th of September. Got that yep. right? On that. Yep. Dan Wheeler of the 8020 Lifestyle Plan or the Big Friendly Nutrition Guy. And apparently he is really, really big. Like, yep. Really He's huge. Um, live at an event in central London called Stop Dying and Start Living. So if you're in the central London area and you're interested in coming, I think the tickets are thirty pounds, is that right? I think they may have gone um they may have gone up now to 50 potentially um spoiler alert actually if people are watching this now i'm going on his facebook live to give away six tickets tomorrow so if anyone follows him um 
actually one thing I didn't say is how to actually get in a life a day. Um, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's important. <laughs> <laughs> if, anyone real, wants, yeah. if anyone wants one, because um, obviously this, because normally this would be when I do these live things, they're on Facebook. So it's just, it, you just find me through the oh, video. But, uh, yeah. Um, if you're already on the internet, which you are, because you're in Rachel's website, I would just say go to mindsetbydave.com, which is basically mindset by Dave like that mindset by Dave.com. There is a contact form on there. And one thing that I, I keep forgetting to tell people on this is sometimes when I reply to that, it will go into your junk messages, even though you sent me something through the contact form, which is really annoying. So don't think that I'm ignoring you because I haven't ignored anybody yet. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thank you so but much. Yeah. If um, Dan Wheeler's Facebook live, I'm supposed to be on there tomorrow at, I think it's eight o'clock. I'm not sure, but it'll be tomorrow. Um, and I'm giving away six tickets on there as part of a life and day, funnily enough. So, yeah. Um, and it's going to be awesome sharing a stage with you. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to give you a piggyback. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd, actually, I did promise to clean and press you at, um, at the yeah, PCN conference, and I didn't. I'm such a disappointment. <laughs> well, I think I'll be able to clean and press you now if I uh, gained a few kilos of uh, sin here. Uh, fair enough. Um, my my one rep max is 110 kilos. I think I'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Dave. Really You're fun. welcome. Thanks for having me on. And um, to you, lovely dish the diet people, you are in very good hands. So massive thank you to Dave for spending time with myself and the members of the Ditch the Diet Academy. I really hope you've enjoyed this conversation that we had. I think it was really, really valuable. In fact, I've actually learned a lot uh, myself from our conversation, like I always do when I speak to Dave. So thank you very much. Um, if you want to get in touch with Dave, um, you can search for him on Facebook, Mindset by Dave or Mindset by Dave on Google and I'll also link to all of his uh, website and all of his stuff on the, in the show notes so you can just click through. Um, the Ditch the Diet Academy, we had our launch uh, just over a week ago, about 10 days ago, that's why I've been a bit quiet on the podcast. Um, there's been a lot of uh, work going on in the background but we are now closed, the Ditch the Diet Academy is now closed and um, we're going to reopen at the beginning of October. So if you missed out on this intake, don't worry, we are reopening in October um, for another uh, cohort of members. And then after that, our next opening will be January 2019. So don't miss out when we open in October. I'll give you more details on next week's episode of the podcast. And until then, have a fantastic week ahead.